In this video, we're going to learn what are super units in Bolt, which is Unity's official visual scripting tool. They allow you to essentially create little modules with custom inputs and outputs that you can then reuse in your various visual scripts. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so a while ago I did a video covering the basics of visual scripting in Unity. That video covers a quick getting started, so if you haven't seen it yet, check the link in the description. At the end of that video I asked what you would like to see, and lots of comments said a complete game, so that's what I've been working on. Now right away, as I started looking into how to make a complete game, I came across the need to organize my visual scripts, and that's when I ran into super units. Super units are essentially functions that you can create in visual scripting. You can define custom inputs and outputs and then reuse that super unit in other visual scripts. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Alright, so let's try it out. As a demo, I have this very basic setup. So this is meant to be my character and it's meant to be in a top-down shooter. So the first thing I want is for this character to look when I move my mouse. So we're going to first make the visual script to look at the mouse, and then we're going to see how we can convert that into a super unit in order to keep our player macro nice and organized. Okay, so let's make our player visual script. Now first select the player and add component, and we're going to add a flow machine. Then here we have film for our macro, so let's create new, and let's call this the player macro. All right, so here's the flow graph. So the first thing we need is the mouse position. Now we can grab the mouse position with the node input mouse position. So this outputs a vector three with the mouse position. And here for testing, just to see what value comes out of here, we can connect this and let's connect to a log node, right? So just a basic debug log and we connect it to our update. Okay, let's test. And yep, here we can see the vector three that is being outputted by this input mouse position. And as I move the mouse around the scene, yep, you can see that it moves. So if I'm on the lower left corner, you can see the vector three is pretty much on zero, zero. And up here on the upper right corner, it's essentially at the size of this window. So in this case, 800 by 400 pixels. However, as you can see, that is the screen position, not the world position. So we need to convert that. Now, the way we can convert that is by adding the node screen to world point. Let me just right click here in order to make this full screen so we have a bit of a working area. And again, here on the graph inspector, we can see exactly what this does. So it transforms a point from screen space into world space. And the inputs are the basic flow. It inputs a screen space position, and it also takes a camera. So in this case, we need to grab the main camera. So we get the main camera connected into down. Then for our flow, we connect into this flow. And for the position, we use our mouse position. All right, so this should be correctly calculating the world position based on the mouse position. Okay, let's see the script. Here we can visualize all of the flow, and we can see on the lower left corner, yep, in there we can see the screen position, and in there we can see the world position. Now the character is on zero, zero, and if I go there, yep, there you go, it's pretty much on zero, zero. Okay, so it seems we have a correct world position. However, in there you can see that the Z is at minus 10, that is due to where the camera is positioned. So in dealing with our math, we really want the Z to be at zero, so let's fix that. Here we can just drag our vector three, and click on vector three and let's expose the entire vector three. And in this case, we want to take the X and Y and set the Z to zero. So afterwards, let's make a new vector three. So we just use this, connect the X, connect the Y, and there you go, here we have our output. So let's drag this one here, this one here, connect the flow in there and the flow in there. All right, so our output should be the world position of the mouse with the Z set to zero. And here we can see all of our nodes at work, all the flow going from left to right, and we can indeed see that our position on the output in here, it is indeed correct. So right down the middle is on zero, zero, zero. So with this, we have all of the nodes that we need in order to get the mouse worm position, and it all works perfectly. However, we have all of these nodes inside of our main player macro. So if we keep this up, then at the end, this visual script will become completely massive by the time we add everything. So that's where super units come in. Now there are two ways we can do this. So here we can right click, go into nesting and create a brand new super unit. And here is the node and we can double click on it. And there you go, we go inside our super unit. So this is one way. 
And doing it this way, it gets saved directly inside of our first graph. So up here we can see where we are. So we are inside player and then inside the super unit. So if you click on the player, we go back upwards one level. So if you have some behavior that you only use inside a single macro, this would be one good way to do it. However, if you want to reuse some general behavior, you should go with the second method of making a proper separate macro. So in this case, this is some pre-general behavior, so let's do that. Here in the project files, I have the macros folder, and let's simply create a new bolt, create a new flow macro, and let's call this the get mouse world position. And now let's copy all the nodes that we developed in here. So let's copy all of these, select the get mouse world position, here we are in this flow graph, and just paste our nodes. Okay, so we have our super node, and now if we go back into the player macro, let's delete all of these nodes. And instead, let's just drag our get mouse world position macro and drop it in here. And yep, it gets added as a super unit. All right, so far so good. However, right now, this super unit isn't doing anything. Now, in theory, it's grabbing the mouse world position, but right now there's no flow input and no flow output, so we can't see anything. So let's go back into our super unit. And in here, you can also see that all of our nodes are dim, meaning they are not being run. So in here, let's add a new unit go into nesting and we're going to add an input node. So here's the input, which again, as the tooltip says, fetches input values from the parent super unit for this graph. And in here on the graph inspector, we can add some settings. So we have control inputs and value inputs. Now let's first add the control inputs and we need a key, which is a unique name. So in this case, let's just call it enter. So this will be our enter flow and just hide the label since this is just a basic flow port. And then down here, we can also add some input values. Now, in this case, we don't care about any input values. All we care about is the input flow, and then we're going to work on some output values. Now here, visually on the input, we can already see that we have a flow input, and this is what we're going to connect in order to make our code run. All right, so now for the outputs, again, let's add a unit. Let's go down into nesting and add an output node. So this passes output values from this graph to the parent super unit. And first we add a flow output. So in this case, let's call it exit. And again, let's hide the label. And now in this case, we're also going to have a value output. So let's click on this. Now for the key, let's call it our world position. And now we need to select the type. So in this case, we're going to output a vector three. So just select vector three and yep, there it is. So here's our output node and we just connect the ports, pretty simple. All right, so just like this, now our nodes are all correctly set up. So we have a self-contained macro with our inputs and outputs. And now we can go back outside in order to visualize the player macro. And in here, we can already see the super unit. Yep, it has an input and two outputs. So we connect the update into this input. And on the output, let's just connect it directly in there. All right, so there it is. So everything should be working. Let's test. And yep, everything is working perfectly. So we have our update event passing in the flow into our super unit. Then the super unit does its thing and it outputs our desired world position vector, which then goes into the log just so we can see it. So as I move the mouse around, yep, you can see that it does indeed output the mouse world position. All right, so that's the basics for super units. Essentially, you put behavior on its own unit so that you can then compose multiple complex units into one complete unit. Okay, so let's expand upon it. We have the mouse world position. Now let's rotate the player towards that. So we need a couple more nodes. So the first thing we need is to calculate the direction. So for the direction, we take the world position. Then we're going to add a subtract node. And we're going to subtract it from the actual player transform position. We get the transform position and we use this one in there. All right, so over here we have direction. Then with the direction, we want to normalize it. So just drag this and we can use the normalize. Okay, so we should have a direction normalized. So again, let's test. And yep, here we can see our normalized direction. So as the mouse is on the right, yep, there you go, one, zero, zero. And if it's above, zero, one, zero. All right, great. So we have direction here. Now we need to convert it into an Euler angle. So for that, we can use a new node, go into math, and we're going to use the tan two. Now here we need the X and the Y. So let's split this vector. All right, here we have the tan two. So this will give us the angle in radians. Now let's convert it into degrees. 
So take the math red to degree, multiply it by our radians, and yep, over here we have our Euler angles. And now in here we can just simply apply it. So at the node, transform Euler angles. Okay, so we create the new vector 3 with our Euler angle rotation on the Z, since we're working in top-down 2D, and we just apply it to the transform Euler angles. All right, so just like this, our character should be looking at the mouse. Let's test. And yep, there it is, there it is indeed, the character is pointing towards the mouse. So as I move the mouse, yep, the character rotates. All right, awesome. So you can see everything is fully working. But you can also see all the tons of nodes that are required to make this work. So if this one wasn't inside of a super unit, this would be even more nodes. So once again, let's clean it all up with another super unit. So let's create, go into bolt, create a new flow macro. Let's call this get angle from vector. And we're going to copy over here these ones to convert the vector into an angle. Now once again, let's add the inputs and outputs. So yep, there it is. We have an input with an input flow and an input vector. Then we do our calculations and we have an output with an output flow and the output angle. And now back in our player macro, once again, let's get rid of all of this. And instead, let's drag the get angle from vector. We input the flow, input our normalized direction vector, and then the output outputs the flow and the output angle. All right, let's test. And yep, everything still works perfectly. So just like this, you can see how useful super units are. They help you manage complexity as your visual scripts become more and more complex. If we didn't use super units, then this player script would have been massive. However, using them, we're using one in order to get the modular position, and another one to calculate the angle from a vector. So with that, all of this relatively complex behavior fits in just a handful of nodes. And again, we can reuse this on anything. So on any other visual script where we need to get the mouse on position, yep, we can reuse this super unit. And whenever we need an angle from vector, we can use this one. You could take it one step further and just group all of these into another super unit by calling it something like rotate transform toward mouse position. All right, so these are super units, an excellent tool to help you manage complexity when using visual scripting. This is the main way that can help you build complex scripts without making the whole thing a mess of spaghetti code. All right, so with this covered, I'm going to continue working on making my top-down shooter completely without using any code. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.